Hey everybody, good morning! Welcome to Drinking with Ray. So, I'm not always drinking spirits or beers or alcoholic drinks. I'm also a huge fan of coffee. Yeah, nice coffee in the morning. I drink coffee probably about once a day through working. Oh, it's essential. Um, what got me into coffee was living in New York City, actually. They're big time coffee drinkers there. Yeah, the rapid pace of New York. Boom, boom, boom. They always gotta be drinking coffee. Anyways, this is a local coffee roaster called Cork with a cool bear on the logo. Logo, Cork Coffee Roasters. And I'm gonna get into a little bit about how you make coffee, which I like. In a French press here is what I like to use, um, but there's several other ways. And I'm also going to talk about the types of coffee beans, coffee growing regions around the world, geography, and of course, history of coffee, and also try it for you. So let's first talk about how you make it. So this here is a French press. Let's check it out. So you saw how that worked. So what you need to do is uh, boil some water. Let that rest for maybe two minutes so it's not like boiling hot. Then you add about six scoops I usually do into this, uh, tablespoons into the French press. Mix in the water, stir it a little bit while it goes in, and you let it sit maybe like uh, five minutes, seven minutes. It soaks it up real nice, and then you plunge it down and pour yourself a nice cup. The French press. There's many coffee making um, procedures, but this is the one that I use. So Cork Coffee Roasters is a really cool artisan company here in uh, Cork, Ireland. They've been open through this time, and... All right, so up here in the northern areas of the world in Ireland, coffee obviously doesn't grow here, but this company imports their coffee. It doesn't say where, so I'm thinking it's a blend. We'll talk about coffee uh, growing regions in a minute. But they import their coffee. They roast it, uh, hand, roast, hand roasted in a sustainable fashion. They do it in small batches and, uh, yeah, they make some of the most flavorful coffee on them on the market here in Ireland. So let's give it a try. Cork Coffee Roasters. This one is the morning growler. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. Okay, so let's give it a try. Nice black coffee is what I like. I don't like putting any sugar, any milk, you know, to each their own. But I really like tasting the bitterness of the coffee. It uh, shows its geography about where it came from, process it went through. We'll talk about that in a second. Hey, so cheers, everybody. Yeah, nice. Kind of nutty flavor. Bitter, but not too much. So, boom, just like that, caffeine is why everyone likes coffee. It's a com chemical compound that's in the coffee beans. It gives you a little little boost, you know, it gives you a little energy. It makes you feel alive. And billions and billions of people around the world now like that feeling. But let's talk about how we got to this plate world where... Coffee is so prevalent and enjoyed by billions. Okay, so there's four types of coffee beans in the world. The two most popular ones, uh, most prevalent ones are Arabica, named after Arabia, and Robusta. 
Arabica is by far the most uh, most made. It doesn't say on here where this comes from or what type of bean it is. I usually like that. I'm sure you could get the information if I ask the barista back down the hill there. But <laughs> Okay, so those are the four. Uh, the other two are Liberica and Excelsia. Which I tried actually in Indonesia. Big coffee growing region. That gets us into this part. So, as of right now, the Brazil is the top coffee producing region in the world by far with uh, 44 kilograms, 44 million, I'm sorry, 44 million kilograms produced last year. Ooh, it's a lot of coffee. Yeah, it's a big country. So there's something specific about the coffee um, growing regions of the world. It's the area around the... Okay, so the coffee growing regions of the world have to be around this area. There's a band right here around the equator because coffee trees need to grow at a certain temperature. It's usually in humid jungle-like environments, but also at a certain altitude. So it needs to be kind of rocky areas. That's why a lot of coffee growing regions are like volcanic jungle zones right around the equator in the middle of the planet here. So obviously up here in Ireland, America, Canada, you know, can't grow coffee there. All of Europe. So coffee is a huge import export business. Uh, the next biggest countries, actually number two is Vietnam, then Colombia, South America, Indonesia. Ooh, yeah, Indonesia and all their volcanic, amazing islands. I've traveled there and, tr and tried a bunch of coffee grown on the spot, like in Bali and Java, right? We've all heard of Java coffees. Well, Java is the most populated island of Indonesia. Then comes Ethiopia, number five, several other countries, Central America, like Honduras, Guatemala, Mexico, Nicaragua, also Africa, Ivory Coast, Kenya, Tanzania, um, Ecuador, many, many, many are on this list. <clears throat> so they need to be in a specific area of humidity, lots of rainfall, like a rainforest, and altitude. It's very specific when it comes to coffee. But let's talk about the fifth growing Number five growing coffee region in the world, which is Ethiopia. So that gets us into the history. So the origins of coffee. Let's take a sip for this. This is really fascinating. The origins of coffee are thought to originate in the Ethiopia region, maybe around Kenya or Sudan in this region of the world. Over a thousand years ago, coffee was uh, discovered there. There's a few different stories. The one I like the most, though, there's not a lot of evidence of this, but a coffee uh, goat herder, I'm sorry, goat herder in Ethiopia had his goats going along the trail, and he noticed them eating some berries off a bush. And all of a sudden, his goat started jumping around, Getting, moving around all crazy. He could barely catch any of them. And he went, whoa, what, what is going on? Why is, this, why is this happening to my goats? They're all lively. They're not sleeping at night like they usually do. The goats were eating coffee beans. So the goat herder in Ethiopia, he decided to you know, pick these beans. He tried eating them. Oh, they tasted super bitter and terrible. Um, then they tried roasting them in a fire and they noticed that they just got hard. They tried, you know, different experiments on what, how to consume these beans. You think about this with all foods, right? Who was the first to try chili peppers? Who was the first to try potatoes? Something like this happened with everything that we have, even alcohol. So eventually they, the roasted beans, they thought, oh, all right, let's uh, pour some hot water over it and... Make a drink with the beans. Maybe that would work because they're inedible when uh, roasted and also inedible when fresh, which, ooh, <laughs> too bitter. And they made the first ever cup of coffee. I'm thinking it's around 800 AD that this happened, um, something like that. 
But it was the Arab world that made coffee widespread and super popular. So there's some other stories about a Moroccan Sufi. When traveling to Ethiopia, he observed some birds feeding on the berries and had the same, a similar kind of uh, experimental process where they figured out how to uh, boil the roast and put water, hot water onto the beans. So coffee made its way in around 1,000, 1,100, 1,200 into the Arab world where it became popular, which is North Africa and the Middle East. <laughs> map, map there. So, you know, Muslim culture, um, alcohol is prohibited. is part of the rules of Islam. So, you know, there's different things that like tea and uh, cig uh, n cigarettes, nicotine, that offer kind of a replacement. Um, so coffee was another one of those. You know, I don't know exactly how this works, but. Uh... <laughs> All right. So coffee spread into the Muslim world in the 13, 1400s. From places like Baghdad, Cairo, Damascus, Constantinople. Um, Muslim Sufis and different people were using coffee as part of their prayer and chants to get them closer to God. There was a real mystical quality to coffee. I like that kind of stuff. So it was belief. So coffee uh, houses started opening all, all over these areas. Uh, Baghdad, Iraq, Syria, the Middle East, Mecca, Medina. To certain points of success, you know, some uh, more hardline, strict sects of uh, Islam kind of were like, oh, this is, you know, this is too much. This is not changes the body effect too much. So they outlawed it and banned it in some places. But what really, really, really spread the coffee to the rest of the world was the Ottoman Empire, who conquered much of the area of the Middle East from Istanbul, you know, former Constantinople. Ta coffee got really big in the Turkic, Turkish markets, and they were the first ones to kind of mass grow it from their held regions in Africa and you know, trading with uh, North Northeast Africa. And coffee houses began growing and getting bigger all over the world soon after, but first in the Ottoman Empire. In the 1500s, with trading with the Ottoman Empire, people from Venice started importing coffee beans and also all the way in London. They, the first coffee house opened in London in the 1500s, 1583. There was a person that had a shop in St. Michael's Alley. I walked through there actually recently. The person that had a shop that sold Turkish luxuries and imported items. And they had the first coffee ever in England. Man, they, and they love England. They love coffee in England now. It's crazy. Um, so it began spreading into Europe. Austria, Vienna coffee is really famous. That actually happened with a, the battle against the Ottomans from the Austria-Hungary Empire. They brought in, uh, seized loot from this battle where they beat the Ottomans, pushed them back, and some of it was coffee beans. And they're like, what, what do we do with this stuff, man? <laughs> and, you know, they, someone told them they make a drink with it, and that's how Vienna coffee, super famous Austrian coffee started. Um, other places like France, you know, they, Started Germany, Italy. Whew, they love coffee in Italy, right? France and Italy with their espresso. This all came from the trade with the Ottoman Empire, which you know was close by. So soon after this, into the age of colonialism and exploration, this is when coffee truly became global. Global. So we are kind of. Relegated to this area, Middle East, Europe, coffee, coffee houses started blown, uh, getting built, 15, 1600s. 
But then the colonial powers, so this is kind of a sad story actually. They uh, you know, went to Asia, Dutch went to Asia, Indonesia, they began growing coffee there because of the suitable climate. Um, Spanish, Portuguese began going to Latin America, began growing coffee there in Brazil, you know, uh, Central America also because of the, because of the suitable climate. Also, different colonial powers in Africa and India, in British and in India and Myanmar, places like that, Malaysia. They started growing it. The British, um, French started doing it also. So this heavily relied on slave labor, which is a sad, sad part of this. Oh, Caribbean. How can I forget about the Caribbean? Jamaican coffee, oh, some of the best. You know, Cuba, Puerto Rico, they started growing it there also. This started the coffee revolution. Oaxaca, Mexico, different places all over the world they found were suitable climates. To this bean that was blowing up all over the world. People really just started loving coffee. The average working man needed it to keep going in the factories and, um, you know, intellectuals at universities and people writing poems and manifestos and books and all these ideas. The Age of Enlightenment was highly um, influenced by coffee, coffee drinking. They noticed, you know, you go to the pub, a lot of good ideas come there, have have come there at the pub, drinking alcohol, beer. But that's just kind of a different thing. They, uh, you know, it's uh, <laughs> a little bit more unorganized. What You go to a coffee house and people are real, you know, put together. It's known as a stimulating drink. Where you could uh, come up with ideas. So this just had a huge demand. The colonial powers were getting on this. Uh, Dutch East India Company. British East India Company. It was a huge market all over the world. A lot of people suffered. Local peoples. Natives in a lot of areas. Forced labor and African slave trade. But it paved the way to what we have today in the coffee world. So one cool thing about coffee, which is now globalized, and especially 1800s, 1900s, all around the world, people love coffee. One cool thing is it's really based on the specific geography of an area. So depending on the altitude, the soil type, the weather, the... Um, Rainfall for the year, it all is hyper specific to a certain region, wherever you grow it, you know, also based on the type of coffee beans that you're getting from Indonesia to Congo to Brazil to Ven uh, Cuba, Jamaica, Venezuela, India, all kinds of places grow coffee now, Haiti. And that's one reason why I like getting a black coffee, because I like the taste. I like to taste that geography and history all in the cup. And, you know, it's really low calorie. There's not a lot of uh, calories when it comes to coffee. You know, go on a diet, black coffee is certainly fine to drink. I think there's like two calories per cup, something crazy like that. And it's an amazing thing. I love coffee. I'm a huge fan. So to all my coffee drinkers out there, thank you for joining me on another Drinking with Ray, where I try all types of different drinks, talk about history, the process, places where they're grown in the world. Coffee is a good one. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, like this video, subscribe, tell your friends, and I'll see you next time.